guys, this is Jess out again. So today I would like to go through the default functionalities in Business Central. Business Central gives you the ability to recognize a revenue or an expense in a period other than the one in which the original transaction was posted. That way you can spread the financial effect of a number of periods. So let's say you want to post an expense of $12,000 but you don't want to recognize that amount on the same day when the invoice was posted. So you have the ability to defer the posting over a number of months. The example I'm going to present today, I will generate a purchase invoice for a consultancy fees of $12,000. And based on the configurations that I represent, I expect the system to expense out $1,000 every month during 12 months. This requires a few configurations. The first one is to define what we call a default template. The default template will specify how the deferred amounts are calculated in the system. Then I will assign the template to the GL account because this is what I'm going to use on the purchase lines. I will go through the standard invoicing process and I will end the presentation by reviewing the posting to the GL entries. So you can see the financial impact between a standard invoice and an invoice that uses the default functionalities. Let's get started. Let's create the default template. I'm going to use the search bar and I'm going to search for default template. It should be the first option on the pages and tasks. So I'm going to add a new template here and I'm going to call it 004. I'll provide a description, monthly consultancy fees. I will add a default account. So the invoice amount will be posted to the default account instead of the, the standard expense account. So this is usually a temporary account and every month when the deferred amounts are posted to the proper GL, the system will deduct the deferred amount from the value of the death row account. Uh, typically here we use a balance sheet account. I have created a new one called unpaid expenses, which is account 5320. That's the one I'm gonna select here. Then I'm going to move to the death row schedule. On the death row schedule tab, I will first specify a death row percentage. So you can decide to defer the full amount on the invoice or just a portion of it. I have decided for that example to just defer the total amount on my invoice. So I'm going to set the death row percentage to 100%. Then I will specify a number of periods. Periods here refer to your accounting periods, and uh, it defines actually the number of uh, accounting periods used to defer the amount to. So typically here, if I add 12 months, because uh, my accounting period is set to month, uh, and I post an invoice of $12,000, the system will actually spread the, the total amount over 12 months. Then I will select a calculation method. I have four options here. They all depend on the number of periods. Uh, so the first one, let's start with the one that doesn't need too much explanation is user defined. So user defined means that the user will manually uh, specify for each period, in my case, each month, the, the deferred amount that must be posted. Um, so that's a manual entry, basically. Days per period, the system will calculate the number, the, the deferred amount uh, based on the number of periods and will distribute it based on the number of days for each period. So the number of days, in my case, for each month. So this means that actually the deferred amount, let's say for January, 
will be higher compared to February because in January we have 31 days and only 28 um, in February. I will give you, show you an example and you will see that the deferred amount reflects the number of days for the month. Then, then I will, you have another option called equal per period. So this means that all the deferred amount, amounts posted in the system uh, will be uh, the same for each month. So in my example, and this is the one I'm going to select actually uh, in, in uh, the presentation. If I post an invoice of 12,000 and I have 12 periods, the system will divide 12,000 uh, by 12. So I'm going to post every month $1,000. So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, the last option is straight line. Straight line, the system will calculate the deferred amounts based on the number of periods and will distribute it uh, based on the period length. So I'm going to select my calculation method equal per period. And then I will pick the start date. So the start date uh, specifies when the system will post the first deferred amount. Of course, you can select the posting date on the invoice. Uh, it can also be the begin beginning of the period. So which means the first day uh, of the period. So in my case, uh, because my accounting period is set to month, it will be the first day of the month. Uh, if it's set to end of period, it will be the last day of the month. And if it is set to beginning of next period, and I post my invoice, let's say in January, so basically the first deferred amount will be posted on the first day of February. Okay. So in my example here, I'm going to select beginning of period. Then I will add a description that will be printed on the GL entries. Uh, this is just going to give you um, an indication about the posting. So I'm going to put consultancy fees and the nice thing here is you can put some variable so you can specify the month or the year when the amount is posted so if for example i'm going to put percentage four this will specify the month uh, when the deferred amount is posted to and uh, percentage six the year once you have the template completed uh, the next step is to assign it to the GL account. So I'm just going to close the default template. And on my role center, I'm just going to open up my chart of account. And I'm going to search for the account 8320, which is the consultant services account. I'm going to edit the GL account. What I'm interested in here is on the posting tab. I'm looking for a field called default default template. So once I specify the default default template and I enter the GL account on the purchase invoice, the system will know how to calculate the, the deferred amounts. So I'm going to select here my default default template and I'm going to pick the code number 004, the one I just created. That's all you need to define on the GL account. Of course, if you're going to use the type item or resource on your purchase line, you have exactly the same setup on the item card and the resource card. Once I have this setup completed on the GL account, the next step is to create my uh, purchase invoice. So I'm going to go to purchasing. I'm going to hit purchase invoice. I will create a new invoice. Uh, I'm going to just select uh, vendor, you can pick any, uh, that's just for the exercise here, can be the first one on the list. Uh, just for now, I'm just going to change my posting date for, let's say, April 2019th. And then I'm going to add a vendor invoice number. So I'm going to post my invoice 
And the next step is to select the GL account on the purchase line. So I'm going to choose the type GL account. I'm going to specify the account 8320. I will add a quantity of one. Uh, the, def the default default template that I specify on the GL should show on your purchase line. If you don't see the field, you just have to personalize your screen. Um, yeah, so if you have a default default template, the value should be shown on your purchase line. Of course, if you want to edit the template from here, you can also do it straight from the purchase line. So then I'm going to specify my amount of $12,000. I just want to double check. So the total amount on the invoice will be $12,000. Uh, I did not add any GST just to simplify the, the, the example. Now, before I post my invoice, I have the ability to review what will be the deferred amount posted in the system once I, I uh, invoice um, here. So to view the, 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 all the deferred amounts prior posting, you can go to the deferral schedule. So go to line, then related information, and then click on deferral schedule. So the deferral schedule is actually retrieving the information from the invoice in uh, the deferral template. So here I have the amount that will be deferred. Uh, just remember, I picked a deferral percentage of 100%. So basically here, the amount to defer is actually the full amount on the invoice, so $12,000. I can also see the calculation method from the template, the number of periods, uh, I set my posting date on the invoice to April 1st and I, I, on the template I specify that I want to post the first deferred amount on the beginning of period. So ba basically it will be the first day of April. So this is the start date here. On the lines here I can see all the posting date for all the deferred amounts. So it will start on April 1st, then I'll have it posted on May 1st, June 1st, and so on. I can see the description. You can see also that the variable I specify here is showing uh, in the description. So I can see the month and the year in which the uh, deferred amount is posted. And of course, I have the amount for each month. So because I set my calculation method to equal per period, the amount here is uh, $1,000 every month. Now, let's say that you picked another calculation method and uh, you want to verify uh, what will be the, the amount calculated by the system. So you have the ability to update any of the values here. Let's say the amount to differ, the calculation method, and so on. So I'm gonna, just going to change it for days per period. You have a nice function here called calculate schedule and the, the calculate schedule will actually, uh, based on the changes you've made on the default schedule, it will update the deferred amount here. So I'm going to hit calculate schedule and you can see here, I did not change the number of periods. I did not change the start date. So my posting date and my basic, you'll see also my description are the same. But the amount here is, uh, has, the all amounts have been updated. So as I was mentioning previously, if you set it to days per period, the, the, um, the deferred amount will reflect the number of days uh, for that month. Okay. So if I take, for example, uh, I don't know, December, uh, November 2019, I have 30 days. And in December 2019, I have 31 days. So, of course, my deferred amount for December is higher compared to November. So, uh, it's a good way to verify uh, which amount will be posted. And, of course, if you're doing some testing, right, you can play with the different calculation method, number of periods, and you just have to refresh your schedule by uh, clicking on calculate schedule. So for me, I just want to post the same amount 
uh, amount every month. So I'm just going to recalculate it. And you see it just got updated again. So once you're happy about the deferral schedule here, uh, you, I'm going to click close and I'm going to post my invoice. And I'm going to say yes. And I want to review my posted invoice. So what I'm looking for here is to review the GL entries. So I'm going to go to actions, then navigate. Uh, and I'm going to edit the GL entries in here. I have six entries. So first note here, when you open up your general ledger entries, it's going to be pre-filtered by the invoice posting date. So just go, uh, let's uh, look a little bit more in details about what happened here. So typically, if I don't have a deferral schedule, this, the system should post a debit to my expense account, so the consultant services, for $12,000. And then uh, the system should credit my account payable, okay, for, again, $12,000. This is the typical posting if you don't have a deferral uh, schedule. Now, because I specify the full template, uh, what the system is going to do, the system will reverse the posting to my consultant services account. So I will get a credit to that account for the full amount on the invoice. And uh, the system will actually debit my default account, which is my unpaid expenses over here. For 12,000 and because I reverse the posting to the, the expense account the, and I specify that I want to post the first deferred amount on uh, the first day of the period I will also get a debit of $1,000 to the consultant services and the system will deduct that value from the default account so I will get a credit of $1,000 um, still again on April 1st on the unpaid expense account. So this is uh, the posting for the first month. Now, if I want to see what will happen for the other months, you have to clear the filter, the, the filter and remove the posting date. So if I remove the posting date here, I'm just going to... Um, close the, the filter pane, you should see here that for the next month, which is May, I will also get a debit to my expense account. And then I should also get a credit to my un unpaid expenses. And I will, this posting will happen every month until I have expensed the full amount on the invoice. So that was all about the deferral functionalities. I hope you liked the presentation. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.